Welcome to the Living Artist Podcast. I'm your host, Preston M. Smith. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Living Artist Podcast. I'm Preston M. Smith at PMS Artwork Everywhere on Internet Land and Socials. I want to thank you for landing on this podcast. Whether you're a professional artist, just getting started in the art world, a collector of art, or just consider yourself a creative person, this podcast has something for you. I like to think of it as a fun way to rant and talk to other creative people about living the life of an artist, surviving and getting ahead in the art world, and enjoying your life. But most importantly, not waiting until you're dead to make it happen. All right, let's get started. Welcome to the one year anniversary of the podcast. Listen, we're really glad to have you here. One year? It's not bad. One year? Big deal. Yeah. Welcome back to the podcast. I can't believe it has been one year, actually one year and a little over a week since we got this whole party started. Hala. Yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing. I am grateful for all the listeners and grateful to be having so many wonderful guests on and just being able to keep this going, keep the ball rolling. I'm happy to say that since we started, since uh, the Living Artist Inception, we have gotten 47 five-star reviews on Apple Podcasts, and I don't know exactly how many subscribers, but we've gotten quite a few. Just very happy and grateful to have all the support and looking forward to taking it up a notch. But since we got started, we've also been listed on Feedspot, the top 25 art podcast you must follow in 2020, and now been upgraded to the top 30 art pod- podcasts you must follow in 2021. And we are now number 10 on that list. So that's awesome. And looking forward to maybe creeping up a couple notches. We also had a feature on Discover Pods, uh, where there's a question and answer with me. If you want to check that out, you can look in the description. And very cool thing coming up soon. Prison Arts Collective reached out to me and said they love the podcast. They have developed a radio program called Outside Inside Radio, which you can listen to on Anchor.fm or Spotify. And it's a nonprofit organization, Prison Arts Collective, where they're trying to reach people who've been incarcerated and spread the power of art, which I think is amazing. I love the organization. I love what they're about. And they also broadcast on KSBC in San Diego. And they asked me if I could put a couple episodes on the broadcast. So into this month, we're going to have a couple episodes on KSPC through Prison Arts Collective. And very grateful for that. So many cool things happening. And yeah, I just wanted to thank you all for your support. I'll join in on this slow clap. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Seriously, the podcast wouldn't be anywhere without your support, so I really appreciate it. And now, for something completely different. I know, things are tough all over, but we gotta move on, people. So today I just want to talk very quickly about taking responsibility. It's something that has been in my mind recently, just from... You know, being on the podcast, uh, talking to artists over the years, talking to myself in my own head over the years, and how important it is to take responsibility for your art, for your career, and for your creativity. I mean, look, no one else is going to do it for you, right? I think there's just a lot of easy ways to make excuses for not having creative output, not taking control of your art career, and not really getting to the level that you can. I think it's just easier. You know, it's easier to not put in the effort. And, you know, I'm not dogging on anybody. And I've been there. Believe me, I've been there. But I think it's one of those things where if you really want it, 
you just have to do it. You can't listen to the excuses in your head. You have to quiet those voices at some point. It's like, for example, me, I'll, I'll share a personal story. Uh, as you know, probably for listening to this podcast, I used to like to party a bit. I used to drink a lot and it was just part of my routine. It was just something that I enjoyed and something that helped me blow off steam. And I thought it was just something that you just did. You know, you did it with your friends. It was something to look forward to, especially if you hate your job, (laughs) which I did. And, you know, it was just something that I really, really looked forward to. And I got trapped in a cycle with that of, you know, drinking and not feeling well the next day and then looking forward to drinking again after a shift or after a painting session. And that was the other part is it was really tied in with my painting. It was like a reward at the end. And I really got to sit back and enjoy it, which was very hard to break free from. But I realized at some point that, you know what, I'm not going to be able to get to the level that I need to be at with my career. I was painting. I was, I had the creative output. That was no problem. And I was fine with that. For a while, I just really convinced myself that somebody else will do it for me. Somebody else will take the reins and somebody else will find and discover my art, my artistic genius, and they will take over for me and I'll be fine. All I have to do is just keep creating. I can just keep creating and drinking and be happy the rest of my life. Well, that doesn't really happen very often. I would say 0.001% of the time that happens to some artists. But, you know, I would even venture to say that won't continue at some point. At some point, you have to take control of your art career a bit. And so I decided to get serious and I decided to stop making excuses and rationalizations. And yeah, of course, there was some deep-seated emotions and feelings and maybe even some trauma underneath uh, the drinking, but it didn't really matter at some point. That worked for a while. That worked with my rationalization for a while. But at some point, I just had to go, okay, that is valid. I understand I'm making peace with that and I'm not going to fault myself anymore for it. But from this day forward, I'm taking responsibility and I'm deciding to change and I'm deciding to learn and adapt and take control of my art career. And that's what I did. And it took a while. You know, it wasn't an easy transition. I didn't just snap my fingers and boom, hey, I've got control. No, it took a while, of course. But it was that seed that was planted. It was that decision that really sparked everything else. And, you know, you can listen back to any other podcast and find out how to do that. And, you know, a a blueprint or a game plan to how to kind of get an online presence or how to target galleries or whatever you want to do to take control of your art career. But this point is just to take responsibility and to stop listening to those voices in your head that might be giving you some excuses and at very least some distractions, right? I've heard it all. I've heard, oh, I can't do that because I'm too old or I just don't understand this or, you know, I didn't go to art school or I don't know anybody in the art world. I mean, you can, I can go on and on for days with excuses. And a lot of them are true, actually. That's the kind of insidious part of them is it's easy to believe that because there's some truth behind it. Uh, it's almost like, you know, the, the joke thing, like, Everybody says, well, you wouldn't have said that if part of it wasn't true. A lot of times that's true. You know, there's some truth. There's some root of uh, truth in all those things, in the rationalizations, in the excuses, uh, in the observations. That's fine. But I think what you need to do at some point is just go, what is more important to me? Believing my excuse, believing my rationalization, or turning the corner and having the art career that I want to have, or being able to have the creative output that I want to have, or you know, finally quitting that day job that might be holding you back and burning the boats and getting out there and doing it. That's the important question. Can you finally make peace with that? Or can you finally say, no, that's enough. Now is the day that I stop believing this voice in my head and I start moving forward. I think this is just something that I've been pondering a lot recently. And you know, I had a little mini excuse with my back recently. And yes, my back has still been bothering me, but I'm finally turning the corner, I think, which is great. But I think there were some parts where it's easy just to go, you know, my back's hurting me. I should just not do it. I just decided I'm going to push myself a bit, you know, very carefully while doing the exercises and stop believing that voice in your head. It was just a reminder of that. So I thought I'd share all this with you. 
maybe there's something going on in your own life that you need to think about and, you know, shine some light on. And, you know, how am I being held back? How am I being held back by my own beliefs or how am I being held back by this voice inside of my head that's making excuses or rationalizations? Just some food for thought to think about this, whatever, this week, this month, this year. It might take some time, but it's worth it. Uh, Meditate on it. Think about it while you're painting and you might have a little aha moment. So anyway, that's it for today. I know this one was kind of up and then uh, serious, but hey, that's what it is. And I think it's still valid. So I just want to end by thanking everybody again for all of the support and for listening to the podcast. I can't wait to bring more to you. I've got some amazing interviews coming up some interesting things up my sleeve and we are growing and yeah, I just think you got a bright future here and I hope you realize the same for yourself that you got a bright future with your art, especially if you start taking control of it. So anyway, thanks for listening everybody and we'll catch you next time. What year? I don't see the big deal. What's all the fuss about? I'm out of here. This has been the Living Artist Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. I just want you to know that I appreciate you being here, and I'm grateful to be in your ears. Your art and creative life on this planet is meaningful, so thank you for sharing it with me. If you like this podcast, whatever platform you're listening to it on, please subscribe and share it with your friends. You can also leave me a positive review to show your support. This helps me to reach more people with the algorithmic magic and keep the show going strong. If you want to see more of what I do and check out the art that I create, you can visit my website at www.pmsartwork.com or follow me on social media everywhere at PMS Artwork. That's it for now. See you back here next time.